This is Lone Star Community Radio on 104.5 KCZW LP Conroe and 106.1 KZCC LP Conroe and worldwide at IRLoneStar.com. Thanks for checking out this recording on Lone Star Community Radio. This is Dick, the general manager of Lone Star Community Radio, and I wanted to give you a quick reminder of what's going on with us for the month of September. A new show has been added to our lineup. The Good News with Ted Cox is going to be on Tuesdays from 1 to 3 p.m. during our talk block. And also joining the talk block is going to be Mornings with Lone Star. Every weekday from 10 to 11 a.m., Mornings with Lone Star will extend their normal programming for music into talk. That's right. Starting from now on, from 8 to 11 a.m., Mornings with Lone Star. First two hours, music, talk, fun. And then from 10 to 11, more nitty-gritty talk radio for you. Also extending their time slot is going to be our favorite Saturday morning show, Grit and Grace. They're going to be extending their hours from 8 to 10 a.m. every Saturday morning for you. Also, the last reminder is we still have plenty of talk slots available for those who want to be a talk show host and also volunteer DJs for music. If you're interested in those kind of things, please let the studio know at lscrstudios at gmail.com or call the station at the message line at 936 647 Three seven seven six. Thanks again for checking out Lone Star Community Radio, and I uh, hope you enjoyed the show. Well, good afternoon, and welcome to the Good News Show, broadcasting out of Conroe, Texas, on one hundred four point five and one hundred six point one, and streaming live on irlonestar.com. This is your host Ted Cox, and we. Uh, have another exciting show where we have some very interesting guests on. And as we introduced the show uh, last week, this is a, a little bit of a slice, as the name of the show would imply, as the good news show is. You know, we, we seem to be just bombarded uh, with, uh, with bad news, whether it's uh, weather events, which we will talk a lot about t- today, uh, or political events, or, or everything that just seems to be that we're in a period of time now where we're just uh, 24-7 bad news. And so this show is intended, it was built and intended to be just a couple of hours where we pause uh, and we talk to and about people uh, that are doing really extraordinary things in the community. They're doing good, good work in the community. And uh, as, uh, as everyone in the greater Houston area knows, and for those of you who are streaming from outside the Houston area, uh, you know that just a couple of weeks ago, we went through Hurricane Harvey, and just after that, we had Irma in uh, Florida, and we now have Maria making its devastating way through uh, the Virgin Islands and, and through the Caribbean. And while the, sh- while the storm uh, really highlighted a lot of the destruction, whether it was the wind or the floods, coming out of that are so many tremendous stories uh, about rescues and about neighbor helping neighbor. Uh, and this was all regardless of religion, regardless of color of skin, regardless of documented status. It was if someone was in need, a neighbor came and helped neighbor. And so my first uh, guest uh, in uh, today, which will take up the first part of the show, the first hour and a half of the show, uh, we have two uh, photojournalists. In, in studio with me is uh, Tom Darren Liskey, who has his own photography and writing business. And on the line with us out of Miami is Alex Bassoni. And Alex, hopefully I didn't butcher your name uh, too, too badly. Uh, he's going to be with us, and Alex, that is, will be with us uh, on the phone uh, from Miami, who was here uh, in Houston after Harvey to document. And we're going to Ask them to introduce themselves uh, briefly. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about what motivated them and what, uh, what their life has been like. And certainly, Alex, uh, I will ask you to talk a little bit about the JJ community. Uh, so let me introduce uh, Tom. Tom, if you uh, would go ahead and, and say hello and, and inter- make a quick introduction of yourself. And then, Alex, I'll, uh, I'll come to you just after, uh, after that. So, Tom, say, say hello and tell us all about yourself. Hola. So uh, <laughs> Tom Darren Lisky, um, so I'm, I'm one of the photojournalists, uh, documentary photographers who was out um, with with Alex, who's in Miami today, uh, taking pictures and sort of collecting stories and just uh, interviewing people about uh, Harvey and 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 
I guess they're experienced in the storm. Okay, yeah. And Alex, do we have you on? Uh, yes, sir. Um, I hope you can uh, hope you can hear me. We sure can. Thank you for for oh. joining us and taking. Thank, thank you for taking an hour. I know. I know you're in Miami, so you're an hour ahead of us. So thank you for taking time out of your your busy work day to uh, to join us for a few minutes. Why don't you, uh, if you would, take a couple of minutes and introduce yourself? Sure. Um, well, you know, uh, like Tom, I I was with the uh, with the JJ Group. Um, I grew up in in Texas. Um, you know, went through some pretty bad floods. Um, you know, back in '94 as well, and and have kind of seen it. So. Um, so when when this came around, I, I felt it was a good opportunity to um, help get some people together and, and kind of uh, tell stories for for people that you know oftentimes uh, don't get a, a voice to really uh, to speak out and share their stuff. You know, um, not a photographer uh, by profession. Um, I'm a project manager, but uh, but I I do enjoy uh, you know photography and and sharing photos. Okay, so so you're from you're from Texas. What part of Texas are you from? Actually, I was uh, I was born in Houston, uh, grew up in Kingwood, um, and then uh, you know I moved away uh, to, to Los Angeles, got relocated out to Miami, and then moved back to uh, to Houston about a year ago. But uh, then this week, uh, back out in Miami for for work. So. Ah, okay. So now, and where do you live again? Do you live in Miami? No, now I live uh, actually in the Woodlands. Oh, okay. So you're up in my neck of the woods then. Yes, sir. Okay, well, good, good. Well, um, so uh, you you meant you made mention. Uh, we'll talk to to Alex for a couple of minutes since he's going to have to break away from uh, from us around two or around three o'clock Eastern time. Um, so, so what? Uh, how how did this uh, photo? You said you don't do photojournalism uh, or or this type of thing as a profession. Uh, so, is it a hobby of yours? Uh, yeah, you know, I've I've always uh, enjoyed. Um, you know, photography, I kind of, uh, you know, grew up doing it and, um, and, you know, got a, a digital camera a while back and then just started really getting back into it. Um, and, you know, a lot of this really came through, uh, through Instagram, which, uh, which is, is fantastic. Um, it's, it's a, you know, great media medium to, to share and, and get to meet other people. And, um, so, you know, you had mentioned, uh, JJ community and, and, uh, yeah, JJ Community is a um, it's a group on uh, on Instagram, and there's about uh, a little bit over six hundred thousand um, members of the community. Wow. Okay. Um, and it, it it was something that began very very organically. Um, you know, one one guy, uh, Josh Johnson, who's the the JJ. Ah, okay. Um, he started you know sharing other people's photos when he saw photos that that he really appreciated. He started you know, kind of highlighting, he, he always enjoyed kind of the, the teaching aspect and, and it became very much a community thing. And he started highlighting, you know, other people's um, photos and, you know, putting out challenges. And, uh, and so, you know, on a daily basis, people would kind of check in and find out what the theme for the day is and, and share their photos that related to that. And, um, and so the community kind of grew over, over time um, and, uh, and it, it's grown to where it is now. And so when uh, when the floods, um, well, when the storm hit, um, you know, I knew that I, I grew up in Kingwood. I grew up in, in the Forest Cove area of Kingwood, right on the river. Okay. Um, so, you know, I, I knew that that area was going to be hit very hard, um, you know, 20 some odd feet of water, um, you know, pretty much the same thing happened in 94. And so um, I had reached out to Josh and, and said, look, you've got, you know, half a million people um, who are an audience and um, and I, I think it's important to you know show people and share with people what what's happening and um, find ways where people can um, can help um, in, in any you know uh, way shape or form and uh, and give them a, a forum to do that and so um, that's kind of you know where where things kind of um, started developing and Josh okay. you know on his end, um, you know, he, he lives in Atlanta and he was also kind of seeing everything that was going on. And, um, and, um, I, along with some other people were posting photos of, of the floods. Um, and he came up with this idea of, um, you know, getting a, a collection of people together to, um, to document things and, um, and, and really start, you know, kind of spreading the word because, 
uh, everybody who's, who's been through the floods um, understands that when there's a lot of water, there's a lot of attention yes. um, because that's kind of the, the fantastic part <laughs> of things, for, for lack of a better word. But yes. that's what people are attracted to is, is that the visual impact of, of seeing the water and the damage and, and everything. But as soon as the water goes away, uh, a lot of the attention goes away. And that's really when the hardest part hits because that's when, uh, you know, the volunteers have now gone home, you know, a week or two after everything has happened. Uh, people have to go back to their their daily lives, and uh, and there's nobody there to help. Um, you've got to dig yourself out. You've got to rebuild things. Um, things get a lot more uh, difficult as well. There's you know snakes everywhere. There's right. shards of metal and glass, and um, and you know and, and people really that's kind of when the shock has settled down, and uh, and it's just very difficult. Um, so you know right. this is this is kind of where. You know, we came in and said, well, let's see, um, you know, what we can do to, to, you know, see different parts of the city, uh, document, um, you know, the things that are going on, and also, um, you know, talk to people and give them an opportunity to, to tell their story and, um, and, and help them uh, get back on their feet. So okay. uh, the, the purpose of the project was to get as many families as we could um, that, that were affected and interview them. Um, and, and basically put together these, you know, two-minute video diaries or, or, you know, biographies on people, um, which currently we have them right now editing, and, and, and we're compiling all the footage that uh, we finished last week. Okay, okay. And and so then the next step is now, you know, um, getting back with these families, helping them put together their GoFundMe pages, um, and using the the videos um, that, that we've put together, um, images that, that we've taken because not everybody has a camera, um, you know, and, and the ability to kind of move around and, and capture all of this stuff. And, um, you know, or, or even kind of the wherewithal, right? I mean, you're, right. you're kind of trying to rebuild a home. You're trying to find a place to live, um, and, and you've got other things going on. So helping them put that stuff together and then using um, really the power of, you know, the, the JJ community as well as, just social media at large to, um, to to get the word out so that people can uh, can help and the help can go directly to families instead of you know um, right. just kind of going into you know a different mill of of, of different uh, different charities and organizations. Okay, good. Yeah, and we're just just to let you know, since Alex, you're not in uh, in studio here, we're we're about a minute away from going to a break. Uh, but if you don't mind, uh, and then we'll I promise we'll we'll have Tom talk for a couple of minutes. Uh, that if you could, what what do you see as the contrast between Houston and Miami, uh, or the sur- Miami surrounding area in Florida, in terms of the damage between the two hurricanes? Uh, well, over here, what you have is uh, you have a lot of trees that have gone down, and uh, you know the, the thing with Miami is Miami sits on limestone. There's uh, there's really about eight feet of dirt at any one point in the city, and uh, okay. uh, the city is a lot of a lot of palm trees. So when you get uh, when you get high velocity winds coming through here, uh, you know water drains very very quickly. It just goes right back through the limestone, but the trees get knocked over, and so uh, a lot there's still parts of the city that are still without power. Uh, something like thirty percent of the city. Wow, um, of then, Miami. Yeah, of Miami. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And. Uh, and the, the majority of the damage uh, that's been done is, you know, power lines that have had trees fall on them, uh, you know, houses that have roof damage from, again, from trees just uh, just falling apart. Okay. All right. So um, I, it, did, it did seem like that while Harvey uh, came across, uh, came on land, made landfall in the southern part uh, of Texas, and certainly the rain is what just kind of hovered over us for, uh, for days on end. Uh, certainly, Irmo did present itself uh, quite a bit more as a as a wind damage storm. Now, have you had the ability to go out and do any photo documenting of of the of the Florida area, the Miami area yet? Not too much yet. Okay. Um, okay. I'm, I'm hoping to get to that uh, tonight. But really, I think the if things come out, the bigger concern will be um, down in the Keys. Yes. And there's very little information coming out of the Keys because it's it's blocked off. It's uh, emergency vehicles only, um, and there are um, you know, a couple of shelters that, that people had got into that have just disappeared. Okay. Um, so, so I think when news starts kind of filtering out of the keys, I think that's really where you're going to see the most severe damage. 
Yes. And what, when do you think, uh, what are they anticipating in terms of the keys being opened? Probably uh, another week or so. Wow. Um, it, it's, it's only, you know, it's only two lanes uh, in each direction. So, right. um, you know, if you see the, the vehicles that, uh, that they use to go back and forth, they're having to use heavy equipment um, to haul supplies in and more important to, you know, haul all the, uh, you know, the refuse and, and stuff out. So those, those, that road, right. it's one road that, uh, that goes all the way down to Key West. So that, that's pretty much blocked off. Yeah, and it is the only access in in and out. I've been down that that road or that highway, which is uh, a lot of bridge uh, spans as well. Uh, I don't think any of the bridge spans got taken out, but but you're right in terms of the blockage on the roads and and so forth. Correct. Yeah. Well, good. Well, um, as we um, approach our our break here at the in the middle part of the uh, of the hour, uh, when we come out of of break, you're listening to the Good News Show with Ted Cox. We'll come out and we'll talk a little about. Uh, to Tom about his interaction with the JJ community as well, uh, as well as some of the stories that came out of uh, his photojournalism uh, documenting of the Harvey Hurricane Harvey, all the good shows, good good stories that came out of there. So we'll be right back in just a couple of minutes after this break. Our talk shows and music shows are looking for sponsors. Want to expand your brand awareness? Reach the hyper local audience in Montgomery County? Lone Star Community Radio sponsorships accomplish this. Want to see our stats and rates? Check out IRLoneStar.com slash sponsor for more information. Or call in and leave us a message at 936-647-3776 with your question. Get seen on TV or YouTube and heard on our podcast, FM, and internet radio. Sponsor your local radio station with Lone Star Community Radio. Attention movie lovers. The Ticket Stub is a new radio show servicing Montgomery County that is meant for you. The Ticket Stub is available live every Thursday at noon on FM 104.5 and 106.1, as well as anytime on IronLoneStar.com. Connor and Dick will let you know what's coming out in the theater, what is worth streaming, and what's going on in the world of film. The Ticket Stub, your home for movie talk. Well, welcome back to the Good News Show, broadcasting on Lone Star Community Radio, broadcasting out of Conroe, Texas on 105.4, 106.1, streaming live on IRLoneStar.com or through our apps. Uh, in, our, uh, in our studios and on the line, we have both Alex and Tom. These are a couple of great guys that uh, came up and uh, did a photojournalist. Both are, are, are in or around the Houston area and the woodlands and greater area. Uh, we've been talking about sort of what motivated them and through what groups. And Alex has uh, drawn some interesting distinctions between what happened here in Houston with Harvey and what happened in uh, with uh, Hurricane Irma in the greater Florida area. So I want to kind of turn it over for a few minutes to Tom. Uh, and uh, if you can kind of tell us a little bit about how, how you got into photojournalism and maybe some of the other projects. I know that I've seen your photography website. So I want to make sure that if people want to go and see some of your work that we point them to there. I know that Alex will come back in just a little bit to you and talk a little bit about the GoFundMe pages because as a result of this is not just telling the stories and introducing our listeners to you, but also how can we materially help uh, the folks that you are are, uh, are photographing or you're capturing. So uh, Tom, tell us a little bit more about, about how you got into this, how you got interested in this, your your business or ministry that's come from it. And, and then I'll ask both of you uh, as an extension of that is what have you seen over the last few years that has changed from a technology standpoint? Uh, certainly we mentioned Instagram, but some of those, t- those types of things, Tom. Okay. Right. Yeah. So I spent most of my career as a journalist, right? And so I spent the better part of a decade uh, working in Latin America in uh, Venezuela, uh, Argentina, and Brazil, uh, since moving back to the U.S., continuing journalism, except for when I had to get a real job uh, <laughs> with the birth of a couple of kids to pay the bills. Yes. And so um, I worked for a wonderful newspaper out of Europe uh, as one of their correspondents. And so 
I really got into journalism that way. Okay. Because uh, when I would travel, uh, both here and abroad, different countries, uh, everything from Guyana to Brazil to the Navajo Indian Reservation, mm. I'd have to use, I'd have to take the photos. Okay. And so they didn't want to pay uh, press service, so they paid me money to buy a camera, and then I kind of got into it that way. Okay. Um, and how long ago was, was this? This is about... Uh, Beginning in 2006, I'd always, ah. like Alex, I'd always had an interest in, in, in uh, journalism. And uh, I think in college, I couldn't afford a camera. So there was a girl uh, who I kind of had a crush on, and she ah. took a photography class and hated it. So I worked out a deal. I took the photos for her. Ah. <laughs> and she got A's, so she was happy. Okay. And I got to hang out with her, so I was happy. You know? Got it. So, okay. that, that, so that's the real story. <laughs> and, um, and so, but uh, for the past few years, I've been working as an energy data analyst for a company bo- based in both Austin and the UK. So I travel around a lot. Oh. And uh, I think photography, particularly documentary photography and street photography has been sort of like that, that outlet for that journalist still in me. Okay. And so um, I've been able to tread both worlds both the business world, but also at the same time, keep my fingers in the pie of, you know, photojournalism, uh, writing, doing some side projects, okay. things of that nature. It seems like that's a very interesting, uh, almost dichotomy where you have an analyst capability, which is, I'm assuming, yeah. very detailed oriented. Yet on the other hand, although detail oriented, you have an artistic side uh, as well that needs mm-hmm. to be out and needs to flourish in, in the way that you're talking about. So Yeah, I, I probably uh, come off pretty schizophrenic when it comes, you know, <laughs> to me because, uh, it, for example, you know, I was in Mexico in June in Puebla, um, same place that was hit by the uh, earthquakes, right? Ah. So, you know, in the morning I'm at a conference talking to some of the most important people in the Mexican economy, you know, economic managers, all energy policy makers. Right. And so, but my instinct is when my instinct is still when I'm done, hit the street and end up talking to a, and taking some photos of a 14 year old girl, you mm. know, who's living as a shoe shine girl. Right. She's shining people's shoes for like, you know, the equivalent of like a buck a day or just a couple of dollars a day. And so, so even in sort of like straddling that world, I tried to find a fusion between the world of high economics and mm. energy right, to the real facts that, these people's decisions are going to impact this young girl. Her name was Olivia. Right, right. Shining Shoes. Okay. And so when I talk to our clients, or if I give a presentation, I use my photos to say, okay, when we talk about investment in Latin America, we're talking about her future. So, and that's what I want our clients to understand too. And how did that affect? How did that affect the people who were making decisions that you were showing, presumably spreadsheets and, yeah, exactly, and you know? analysts and, you know, if the, if the price of, the gallon or the oil or the or whatever it happens to be go up one fraction. Yeah. How does that make an impact? Well, on... you know, you know, I, I think it and, and it's helpful in the sense that you know because I mean, you, when we talk about you know investments in anything here in the U.S. infrastructure right. or, or energy or or healthcare, you know, we we talk amounts of money that really people like me cannot fathom. You know, we're right. Talking, what is four hundred fifty billion dollars to someone like me? That's a lot of zeros. Right. You know. But then you show the impact of how it's going to really move forward the next generation, whether it's here in the U.S. or right. Mexico or another country. It makes it just a little bit more real. Okay. When you experienced that, when you started to present not just the hard facts on a spreadsheet, but these people who are actually out doing work and on the streets and these dollar-a-day, uh, uh, Olivia, who was doing the, the uh, shoe shining, uh, how did that make any changes, though? Did you were you able to affect changes that uh, that that people were looking at the other side of the spreadsheet, going, I don't think so. It's still yeah. it's still a quarter of a point, which means a billion dollars to our bottom line. You know, I, I think a lot of it comes down to, and I don't know what Alexis is going to think about this, but I think when it comes down to, and you mentioned the change of you know the changes and in, in, in how journalism is presented this day, these right. days with with multimedia, I think that if you can uh, change someone's perception about something in a healthy way in a right. positive way i think that's the impact okay you know i mean uh, um i don't think um you know the secretary of energy is going to call me up and say tom we want to do this but mm. i think if someone <laughs> sees a picture and it has an impact both in their mind and their heart at least that's a little bit of traction you know okay. for someone like me who, who's a believer 
at right. least we're gaining traction right there because this is really an issue of, you know, whether the issue is energy or health or so many things that, you know, we, we face challenges we face, you know, it, it's gaining traction there, not only in the mind, but in the heart, trying to reach people okay. in a positive way. And, and have you found that in both presenting the, the analyst side and the photo side, that people react much more to the visual impact of the photo than perhaps the hard facts, if you will, of black and white spreadsheets? Yeah, you know, it's inter interesting, you know, meeting Alex. Alex is a little bit like me in the sense that, you know, I think an understanding of the business world and economics. I'd, I'd, I learned my lesson about trying to tie a story to hard economic facts when I was uh, working in Argentina as a journalist. I was there in 2002, 2003 during the collapse, right? Okay. And so I was by myself in a news bureau competing against Reuters and Bloomberg and some of the big names. And I had to figure out a way to tell a story that no one else was going to tell. And so a lot of the stories I would sort of write about, you know, I'd hit the street and talk to people, you know? Okay. And so I think what people like myself try to do as a documentary photographer, a photojournalist, and, and especially, you know, with, with the hurricane coverage, is that, is, 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 is try to tell the stories that would be looked over otherwise or that just might not make the radar screen. I know, yeah. you know, when Harvey hit, all the news cameras were on yes. Houston, yes. right? But there were parts of Montgomery County was seeing 15, 16, like Alan mentioned, 20 feet of water. Right. You know, which was worse than some parts in Houston. And so I think... There was a whole underserved segment here in the county of people who are really suffering under the storm. Right. And, uh, you know, and it was people like myself and some of the other people, you know, in the county, a lot of people going out uh, to these hard hit areas to take photos, talk to people to get that out, right. which, you know, 10 years ago was unfathomable. Ah, okay. Yeah. And so that, that will, uh, as we uh, are going to the bottom of the hour uh, break, uh, I'll kind of pose the question, and Alex, Alex I know that, uh, again, it's hard to see what's going on in the studio, so I'll kind of throw it to you. Uh, what's been your experience of what you've seen over the last handful of years, uh, how technology has changed uh, photojournalism and the, not only the way, the method by which, that is the equipment of taking photos, but how they're distributed? Um, what have you seen? Uh, well, actually, it's it's a, a massive impact, um, you know, because it, it used to be that, uh, I mean, really just 10 years ago, um, the, the avenues um, that you had were, were very limited. You had um, a couple websites, um, you know, which were really, they were just mass portals, right? And so like your, your AOL and, and uh, your MSN, right, your, your right. basic homepages. Um, and then you had... You had wherever the, the television stations were pointing their cameras um, and where the newspaper sent their photographers. But there, you know, as, as Tom mentioned, um, you know, it is it, it's a very competitive world, but um, everybody does the same thing. And, uh, you know, also over time, you, you kind of had this, um, you know, this mentality where, you know, people would kind of, you know, merge using other services. So right. um, what people had access to was, was very limited both on the consumer side and on the provider side, right? Because um, one of one of the discussions that uh, that I had with with Josh and actually um, there was a user in the JJ community um, who was actually kind of the first one to ring the bell when when this project started. Um, you know, Josh had said, "Hey, I want to get together this group of photographers to to go down to Houston to document this." And this woman named uh, named. And Danny, she was kind of the first one to ring the bell saying, hey, Josh, you know, you have photographers there on the ground in Houston that live there. And those are the people that you should really talk to first. Right. Um, because those of us that, that are from, you know, Houston, like, for example, when I was looking at, at photos that people were posting, um, you know, it, it's kind of a mentality. And so what happens is, you know, now with with what you have in, in media, um, a lot of people really kind of put things out there that, um, get a lot of, you know, a lot of hearts, a lot of likes, a lot of thumbs up. Right. Um, you know, and, and people like that. And so really what it is is, is people try to, you know, spread stuff that, that you know, gives a, a, a positive light to particular things or, mm. you know, looks 
looks really nice um, because people, I think, kind of feel guilty about seeing a photo. Um, and, and Tom has probably, you know, kind of seen this too with, uh, if, if you've ever looked at, at his profile, the stuff that he does, he, he does very impactful photos that, that tell a story about somebody who really has a, a very rich life story to tell um, that may not be rosy. And mm. people, I think, have some type of emotional guilt about, you know, pressing the heart button on that because oh, in a way they okay. feel like, you know, it, am I saying that I like that this person has had a hard life where really what, you know, they're saying is that, you know, I think it's wonderful that somebody is actually telling this person's story. And so during, during the flood, when I was looking at what photos people were posting, um, you know, I was, you know, standing, um, in, you know, I was standing on the 59 freeway, uh, up to my waist in water, mm. um, looking at a freeway that is now turned into, you know, the San Jacinto river. Right. Um, and those are the photos that I was posting. What I'm looking at other people putting is, uh, you know, their kids splashing around in the front yard where, where, you know, the water's coming up a little bit or, you know, all of the, you know, Houston strong, uh, messages and, and, and those right. positive things w- which are important, but, you know, also there, there's a story that needs to be told. And, um, like like Tom was saying, you know, with this situation, what you had was uh, you, you have all the great visual impact of uh, flooded cars and, and roads um, in Houston with, with downtown as a backdrop. But there are really there are lives that, that are being massively affected. And um, not everybody knows about those areas like where I grew up in, in Forest Cove. Um, you know, they they had water up to you know the waist on the second floor right. of these townhouses, and, um, and and you know I knew about it because that's where I grew up, so I knew that's that's what it was going to be. Um, you know, and, and Tom and I had had conversations where he said, you know, I, I keep hearing rumors that you know there's um, these people somewhere, um, you know, out in Montgomery County that are, you know, living in tents, um, right. and 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 so it's you know having to go and look for that and. And those are the people that are not represented. And, and, you know, when, when you've got something like social media where you can, where you can take those things and you can put that out there, um, it's, you know, people are really starting to filter the news um, mm. that they get. Right. And, and they're, they're searching for particular things that fit in with their ideology um, or things that, that are important to their friends. Um, and, and it's, it's a very social thing and people is as connected as we are to news around the world or, or, you know, how easily we have access to it. People still are very focused on their phone and what is in front of them and they don't see what's around them. Um, so I, I think that's kind of the, uh, you know, the, the big change that, uh, that now you can deliver very specific things to people. Um, and, and there's, there's, you know, everybody is a potential news source. Um, if, yeah. if you know, what story you're trying to tell. Okay. Yeah, that is, that is really interesting. And when we we will be going to a break here in just a couple of moments at the bottom of the hour, uh, you're listening to the good news show uh, broadcasting out of uh, Conroe on Lone Star community radio. When we come back from break, I want to pick up on that thought uh, with you, Alex, on talking about bias. And then we all want to move into uh, you telling some of the stories that had the most impact on, on you uh, and then again, we'll throw it over to, to Tom after that. So you're listening to The Good News Show on Lone Star Community Radio. We'll be back in a couple of moments. Don't forget to download the Lone Star Community Radio app from your Google Play or Apple Store. Bring Montgomery County's community radio with you anywhere with your smartphone or tablet. If you are in the Conroe area, tune in on FM. That's Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1. If you are on the computer, bookmark IRLoneStar.com as your internet radio station. A Lone Star Community Radio, broadcasting 24-7 from the heart of downtown Conroe, Texas. Hey guys, I'm Joey Savage. Corey DLG. We are Nerd Thug Radio. Catch us every Monday from 1 to 3 and check out our website, NerdThugRadio.com. We like to talk about quilting, horseback riding, and baking quiche. Actually, we don't, but we do like talking nerdy to you. That's right. Every Monday from 1 to 3 p.m., hashtag talking nerdy to you. Welcome back to the Good News Show, broadcasting on 104.5, 106.1, and 
Lone Star Community Radio and streaming on IRLoneStar.com. Uh, we are we have in studio and connected on the phone uh, Alex and Tom, who were photojournalists who uh, photographed so many of the touching stories from the aftermath of Harvey. Uh, and we where we left off right before the break was talking about this sort of instant availability uh, on our phones. And so I want to kind of go back a little bit more, uh, talk a little bit more about that to uh, with Alex about uh, sort of point of view. And then, Alex, I'd like to ask you, and then we'll, we'll uh, go over to Tom, uh, to tell us a couple of the stories that had the most impact on you. Uh, and then as we continue to talk about that, I want to make sure that we give people either uh, your website, uh, Facebook page, Instagram, wherever it is that you want to send people. And, of course, we will link that off the Good News uh, Facebook page as well. Because not, not only do I want to talk about these stories that had impact on you two individually and perhaps your friends and family as a result of your work, but also you were mentioning that you've got uh, uh, different films, short films, being developed and edited for the purpose of GoFundMe. And so I want to talk about that. But first, I want to come back to the technology uh, and the instant availability through these mediums like Instagram and others. Uh, and then, so if you'll kind of finish your, your thoughts on that or add any thoughts about that, and then tell us maybe a couple of the stories that had the greatest impact on you that you captured, uh, Alex. Sure. Uh, well, I mean, first to, to your point of, uh, you know, the, the communication portion of it and the documentation portion of it, um, you know, I, I, I think there's a, a great amount of power uh, globally in the fact that every phone has uh, not only a, a digital camera on it, but a pretty good one. Um, yeah. You know, the resolution on 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 your your very bottom of the line phone now is you know, um, it's it's light years ahead of the the top of the line professional camera. You know, eight years ago. Um, you know, it, it's just yeah. just is what it is, and so um, there's a lot of power in that, and um, you know, a lot of people, you know, just grab a camera and, and uh, you know, and take selfies and, and share that. And, and that's great. There's, there's absolutely nothing, uh, nothing wrong with that, sure. but there's also a lot of power in turning that camera around and, and showing things, um, good things and bad things, you know, um, right. I'm not talking about like, you know, shaming things, but, you know, shaming people, but, right. you know, um, but, you know, kind of shining a light on, um, you know, on people that, um, that, that need some help. Um, as well as, you know, highlighting people that, that do good things and, uh, you know, and should be commended. You know, and Tom, you know, kind of being out in the field and, and, and seeing Tom work to me was um, something of a, of a revelation. And I, I really enjoyed it because, um, you know, Tom knows no strangers. And, um, <laughs> and, and you know, he, he makes a, a very quick connection with people, but, you know, he's very upfront you know, and, and talking to people and, and saying, you know, hey, here's my information. You know, I'd love to, you know, to take your photo and I'm, you know, I'll share that photo with you. And, and actually, I'm not going to give away all Tom's secrets. I'll, I'll let you tell him. But. <laughs> well, I was just going to ask him how, how many uh, rejections has he had when he's just come up to people who probably are in what they might feel is their worst moment, right? I mean, the either photographed at the in the aftermath of Harvey or any place else. Of course, we're talking about Harvey right now, but you know, have you have you had people that have just said, "There's no way," uh, but then once you've talked to them, they they maybe change their mind a little bit because you wanted to tell their story. Well, yeah, I, I think one of the most interesting, fascinating things for me during this whole experience was, and, and this is really commendable to the to the spirit of yeah. what the JJ community is, is that I think every photographer um, that I saw on the street with us, a group and. And just the people doing their own stuff, trying to get the uh, you know these stories. Everyone was going out with 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 a heart of compassion, uh, looking to tell people stories. And and I think virtually everyone we spoke to wanted to tell their story because you know this is a very this is a very tough time for people, right? These are people right. you know we talk to people who lost everything, and we you know we've talked talk to a couple Alex and I you know in front of their house, and they're trying to salvage what they can, trying to help their their mother across the street who was what, I think in her eighties and an aunt, you know, these are people who need to be heard. Okay. And so I think, you know, you're talking about the change in journalism. Yes. I mean, you know, TV crews, 
follow the big story. Yeah. You know, but you know, communities like the JJ community, what, what they're doing, once again, giving voice to people who need to be heard and people who might otherwise be overlooked. And I guess it's because, you know, my little Toyota, we were able to kind of like squeeze through some of these, you know, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, trash ridden streets or whatever like that to get to, to people. But, you know, it was just, I, I think, and Alex, you know, heard some fantastic stories too, but it's just, you know, it, it was almost like, you know, we were their couch. People ah, could okay. talk to us and they could open up their heart and, and they could, they just needed to be heard. I think it was just something as simple uh, of being heard. And I don't think there was any one particular time people said, no, please don't. You know, okay. one of the things I found interesting too, is that so many people were, uh, we went to one shelter uh, down in, I think it was the third ward. And uh, you know, there was a young lady, um, Dawana there. Right. And she just showed up uh, to do people's hair so that the women could feel like yes. they were women. Yes. And that's all she was doing. And people were so keen to point out, no, that is the real hero. Yes. For what she's doing for these people. So, you yeah. know, I, th I think it's just people wanted to be heard. heard. Yeah, I can remember one of the most touching story uh, stories we saw, and this was uh, on one of the local stations, so I guess it would be considered part of the sort of media complex, uh, was this, this one gentleman came to the G George R. Brown, and he came down there to cut people's hair. And I, can, I remember him being interviewed just briefly. And he said, I came down here to think I would cut a couple of people's hair. And he was on his feet for 12 hours. Mm -hmm. And he said there was such a change from the people who came in and they were dirty and disheveled and their hair was messed up. And it, it was such a change in them by performing what is sort of a routine accepted service. But this was so extraordinary at this time that they saw such a change in them. Uh, but un unfortunately, what you and Alex do, um, it was that portion of it wasn't captured. We only captured the the sort of aftermath mm -hmm. with this one gentleman who was doing the cutting, telling the stories. Um, so we we were talking about uh, we've we've mentioned now two or three times the JJ community. Uh, so how how could if those who uh, were so inclined on Instagram, uh, how would they go about finding the JJ community? And for amateurs like like me, if I wanted to contribute, would I be welcome in this community? Or is this just a, uh, tell us a little bit about how we can come become part of it. Uh, since we're sure. in an audit, you know, auditory medium right now on radio, it would be great for people who are listening, who have Instagram accounts, stories to tell of neighbors or friends or themselves. How could, how could they become participants in this community? And Alex, I'll, I'll throw sure. it to you first and then, then to Tom. Yeah, uh, I mean, first, you know, what, uh, what what should be pointed out is that um, it, this is really it's a collective of um, some professional photographers, but the, the vast majority are are hobbyists. Okay, um, good. You know, there's there's a, in fact a very significant portion that you know only take photos on their phone, right? So, um, so that they don't do you know the the digital camera and then go back and process their photos and share them. And, okay. um, you know, and, and what Josh had started uh, conceptually was a very positive thing. So, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a very simple concept. Um, first of all, for, for people who are interested, uh, if you go on Instagram and you look up the user at, um, so, you know, you, you go into uh, the search for people, the yes. at symbol JJ community, um, and then just follow along. Um, okay. Now, what, what happens is... Uh, Every day, uh, Josh or, or Kevin, who's uh, Josh is, is the founder, Kevin is, is the CEO. Um, one of them will, will select a uh, you know just a, a daily topic, um, and uh, and and that is what. And there's a, a forum, and they'll list what the forum is. And so, um, if you've got any photos in your gallery that fit that forum, um, then you, um, you, you tag it with, with the hashtag for the forum of the day. Okay. And there's, there's a lot of editors and, and moderators who, uh, they'll go through and they'll, they'll pick their favorite ones to highlight and they'll, they'll reshare them. Um, and, uh, and so that's kind of how it works at, at a higher level. Okay. But then there's, there's also, um, you know, kind of the, the community and, and, and supportive, uh, portion of it too, which is, uh, you know, the, the idea that for, for every photo that you share, um, you find uh, at least uh, you know at least two 
photos to comment on other people's photos. Oh, okay. And uh, and and three that you like, um, and that, that you you know you give uh, you give a heart to, and you know and the idea really is to to be supportive. And and it's interesting because you'll you'll get, you know, if you go through and you start you know kind of reading the comments, they're very supportive. And and you've got these very talented uh, photographers that are in there as well that. You know that, that will you know they'll sit and, and they'll have discussions in these threads about um, you know about what settings they used and, and um, you know and, and it's a, a very interesting thing because as you as you get exposure to all these different styles of photography and, and you're really you're seeing a community of people taking one topic and what is the different perspective right so right. yesterday for example uh, the topic was cars and so there's all kinds of stuff there's uh, you know. I had shared a photo that was taken inside the car um, while we were having while we were driving, and uh, I was not driving. I was uh, I was in the passenger <laughs> seat. Just so everybody knows I was being safe. Good, yes. But um, it was actually during uh, dirt. It was last week while uh, while Josh was in town, and uh, and another photographer, Michelle, was with us. And Josh was driving, and he was uh, teaching like he likes to do. Okay. And I just took a photo that you can't see him really you can see his reflection in the rear view mirror right um and his hands kind of moving around as he's telling telling a story oh i think and, i see it know, is it in a fiat i think it is is that you um, it's actually it's in a jeep okay a jeep, okay yeah. um and so you know that was kind of my take on cars but yeah. then there's you know there there were other people that shared photos of you know old rusted out cars or vintage cars i see in, a uh, uh, volkswagen <laughs> uh, exactly another one that's basically like a graveyard of volkswagen yes there, i see it people that, that's fascinating that post uh, yeah people will post pictures of uh, you know their kids you know matchbox cars uh, you know um in, in some different type of perspective and so you get all these different you know views of things and yeah. it's very interesting it, it really helps develop your your own photography and uh you know and kind of enjoy the hobby and so it works out really well. Um, yeah. There's also um, a web page, and as we do these stories, um, we'll put links to the GoFundMe's um, on that on that web page. Um, the the website is uh, tagitjj.com. Tag it. And, uh, JJ. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And uh, and then that that takes you to the main page. If you uh, if you add, um, you know, a, the, the directory, which is a backslash JJ dash foundation, that'll take you to the, the foundation side of, of the website, which um, has a bunch of different projects that have been worked on. And uh, in, the, in there, you'll see, uh, you'll see the link for, for Story Squad, which uh, is, you know, what, uh, what this group is referred to uh, is Story Squad. So when, when we do different, uh, different things like this, in this case, Houston, um, but you know they've also done um, you know projects for for the the 9/11 memorial. They okay. they've done um, some breast cancer awareness stuff. Um, they've done these large foundation um, projects with uh, with with a museum um, up in in the uh, in the north uh, northwest okay. or excuse me in, in the Midwest. Uh, so they, you know they, there's there's a lot of different things that kind of go on. But um, okay, good. But yeah, that's. That's the other uh, thing, and yeah. and I did want to mention one more thing, if, sure. if I could. Cause yeah, no, go right ahead. Tom, Tom had mentioned uh, earlier when we were talking about um, you know the connection with people. Yes, and and I think another distinction um, in terms of us approaching people, um, you know, kind of in the situations that um, the mass media is is trained. I mean, you're talking about trained journalists that right. are are taught to kind of be in character and report on a story and stay focused on the story where, you know, when, when you're talking about just a, a bunch of wahoos like us that, you know, <laughs> um, are from the neighborhood, but want to tell a story. Yes. Um, we're, we're, I, I don't want to say we're more human, but I mean, we're not that formal. And, um, you know, like a couple uh, of people that had come in from out of town and were helping with this. Yes. Had asked me, you know, will people be kind of, you know, uh, you know, standoffish because I'm, I'm not from here and I'm taking pictures. And I said, you know, as long as you're willing to put on a pair of gloves and help them out, no, you know, these people will embrace you because everybody's going through the same thing and everybody needs help. So if somebody asks you to, to put down the camera and help, you know, rip out wallboard or carry stuff, then that's what you do. You know, you just put, put away your camera right. and just be human for a bit. And, um, you know, one of, one of the people that, that was with us, there, there were um, two women in particular that 
Um, Tom will probably tell you the story of, of this one particular neighborhood, but uh, Michelle and Emily, and they, we were in this area that there were a lot of kids. And so, you know, the second day that we went out there, they were running 30 minutes late because, you know, they stopped at uh, Walmart to buy, you know, a bunch of toys and coloring books ah, and balls. Right. And on top of that, there was one girl that they came across who was uh, 11 years old. And, you know, in conversation with them, you know, the, the girl had said, well, you know, I, I'd like to be a photographer, you know, when I grow up. And so, you know, Emily, that night when she got back, she called her husband. She's like, look, I'm crying. This is so sweet. I'm going to buy this girl a camera. And so, you know, the next day she was getting ready. She had to go back home to uh, to Dallas. And, uh, you know, but she was like, hey, I need to get out to that neighborhood. I need to find this girl and give her the camera. So we went out there. She gave her the camera. She gave her a quick, you know, tutorial on how to use it. And, uh, and, and you know, said, hey, this is your first camera. Just have at it and, and enjoy yourself. And, and, you know, that's kind of the, the difference, right, is that we're not media. We're just people with cameras. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's a really interesting perspective. And uh, just, if you're just list, uh, joining us, we are listening to the Good News Show on uh, Conroe, uh, Conroe's on uh, Lone Star Community Radio. Uh, we have uh, on uh, on the phone uh, Alex, and in the studio, Tom. There are a couple, I think, uh, uh, self proclaimed, as Alex would say, yahoos, uh, mm-hmm. who uh, who did some tremendously beautiful and impactful photojournalist work. Uh, for, for those of you who are just joining us, or if you're streaming live, you can actually go on and look at it now. Uh, but Instagram, uh, the, the community that brought them together, or they were a part of that, uh, that they photographed and posted on this, is the JJ community. So if you have an Instagram account and you want to follow or even contribute, you can go and uh, search for JJ community, C-O-M-M-U-N-I-T-Y, uh, and follow that and join that and even contribute. And, and as Alex was just telling us, they have uh, each day. Uh, right now, I see a whole bunch of cars on their sh- on their page. So each day they have a hashtag that you can contribute to. Likewise, as Alex mentioned, you can go to tagitjj.com. Uh, and if you continue on with JJ Foundation, forward slash JJ Foundation, you'll be able to uh, to see a lot of the work that was contributed here. Um, and Alex, I think you've already mentioned, and Tom will talk. I know that you have to leave us at the top of uh, the hour here at the two o'clock or three o'clock Eastern time hour. Uh, so, uh, yeah. uh, so I'll wrap up as we have the remaining just few minutes with a story that impacted you the most, but I know that you've mentioned now a couple of times that as you are processing some films, some short films, uh, you will have various GoFundMe pages. So I wanted to tell the folks that are listening if you uh, maintain and monitor our Facebook page, uh, the uh, Good News Show Facebook page, or you can go to Facebook and find us at, uh, at Good News Program, uh, we will continually update those. So as the new uh, films come online, as the new GoFundMe pages come on online, we will put those in. And maybe we will have you back uh, from time to time as these new GoFundMe pages come up. Because as you, as you really mentioned Uh, During the course of the disaster, and certainly the few days following the disaster, it's really sensational. The media is here, but two, three, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks later, when people are still suffering without power or without water, or now the the arduous task of rebuilding happens, that's when we need to bring attention, especially to the GoFundMe pages. So we may have you on from time to time, even for a brief few minutes— to talk about the new story that's up, the new GoFundMe page is up. Uh, so we'll, we'll be linking to those on our Facebook page, the uh, Good News Program Facebook page. And so for just the, the last couple of minutes uh, prior to the top of the hour break, uh, Alex, since we only have you for a couple more minutes, uh, why don't you tell us about a story or two, if, you have, if we have time, that maybe impacted you the most? Um, yeah, um, I mean, the, the one that impacted me the most, I think, is, is very easy. Um, if, if you're looking at the foundation page on the website, you're, you're probably looking at uh, a photo kind of taken at sunset um, of a bunch of rubble. Um, and uh, that pile of rubble uh, belongs to, uh, to a woman named, uh, named Joy uh, who lives in, in Forest Cove. Okay, and just, um, just, for the, there, just, just for the people who are yeah. listening, we're talking about tagitjj.com. Is that, is that correct? Okay, uh, good, good. Yeah, and it's actually it's on the foundation page. The foundation. So it's, it's kind of okay. 
it's it's the the cover that, that leads you into uh, into where we're going to be posting uh, all these these videos. Okay. Um, but um, yeah, I, I went. Uh, I grew up in um, actually in that complex of townhouses. Um, they're all you know three and four story townhouses, uh, depending on you know the the layout. But the bottom floor is uh, is kind of a wash, right? It's it's just uh, just a garage. And um, you know after when, when the the floodwaters were high. This is about uh, about half a mile down uh, the river from the the river over um, uh, the bridge over uh, the 59 freeway over St. Center River. Okay, got it. Yes, and and so <clears throat> I, that's that's the neighborhood I grew up in. Um, I grew up in that that same complex. Okay. And so in 1994, when we had our flood, um, and and the flood waters reached 67 feet, we had water about uh, about waist deep on our second floor, and this time the the flood waters got higher. Uh, they they topped out. They said it uh, 69, 70 feet, but that's actually when the when the flood gauges broke. So oh, wow. um, now, judging by the inside of these townhouses, uh, it was probably a few feet higher, maybe maybe about five feet higher than uh, than it was in '94. And so, um, you know, when uh, when the waters receded, that was pretty much the first place that I went, um, and and I went there um, on a Sunday uh, of the the long weekend, actually. And, uh, and as I pulled in, I mean, the, the place, um, you know, it was the exact same devastation I saw in 94 uh, in mm. terms of just, you know, what, what it looked like, which is a, it just looks like a massive beach. And, um, and so I, I just walked up and, uh, and it was like a ghost town because these people have lost everything. They've been away from their place and, and, you know, most people just can't even fathom going back and seeing this. Mm. And so, um, you know, I just I just walked up and there were uh, three women standing in front of the wreckage of this what used to be a townhouse that had collapsed, a four story townhouse, actually. OK. And uh, it was Joy, her daughter, Jennifer and uh, and and her granddaughter. And I just you know, I didn't even really introduce myself. I, I said, hi, I, I grew up here. Um, is there anything I can do to help? I mean, I, I don't know you, but is there anything I can do? And she said. Uh, are you willing to to dig? And I said, yeah. She's like, great. Then grab some gloves. And so um, mm. I just started, you know, helping her, um, you know, kind of dig through the wreckage of her home. And then I said, well, you know, what are you looking for? And she said, you know, at this point, just anything, anything that, that is mine that I can salvage and I can take. And so we started digging and as, as we were doing that, and I was passing stuff down to her. You know, she's saying, well, you know, right now you're kind of in this section of where, you know, what used to be, you know, this, part of my, my home. And, you know, what I would really like to find is my father's flag. It flew over Arlington. Okay. Um, and, uh, and it's, it's very important to me. Um, you know, it's his service flag. And, uh, you know, if I can find my grandfather's Bible, that'd be great. You know, he immigrated to the States from Czechoslovakia. Hmm. Uh, he used to read to me. It's, it's in Czech. He used to read to me, you know, when I was a little girl, he used to read to me from that Bible. And, you know, those are, those are heirlooms. I'd love to find them. And so, you know, we we dug through rubble for about six, seven, eight hours that day, and we finally found those. Oh, and uh, nice. you know, I, I took I took a photo, um, you know, of her and her daughter holding the Bible in, in the uh, uh, in the flag. And uh, you know, the next day I got up first thing in the morning and I came back out and I said, "Hey, uh, Joy, uh, what are we looking for today?" <laughs> and uh, and you know, we we went right back into it and. Uh, you know, and that day she, you know, she she gave me another list of things and, and said, you know, I think it's down there. Um, you know, I mean, her house basically caved in. Um, she she lived in a, a unit that was um, six different townhouses. Um, the river was, you know, maybe 20 yards from the uh, the front of the, the townhouse, and then there was a 10 foot drop, you know, from the edge of the bulkhead down to the river. Um, at some point during the flood, the, the bulkhead ripped open and everything that was under the foundation, all that soil just flowed away oh. and the concrete foundation crumbled in. Uh, clearly the first three buildings or the first three townhouses were during the flood. And then once the waters had gone away, there was just nothing to support. And then hers fell over uh, because the rubble that was left was only hers. The rest was just a big crater. And, uh, and so we, we dug through that for, for really a week. 
um, where I was just out there every single day, and we found all kinds of stuff. We, you know, we found the last letters that uh, you know she she had from from her son. We found oh. um, the the uh, the the baptismal gowns for her two kids. Um, you know, in, in you know some some pieces of art that that mattered a lot to her. Um, you know, a painting that uh, that her brother had done who has passed away. And so, you know, these are really it, it's it's amazing because you're you know, in, in one sense, you're just you're just kind of digging through junk at this point. Everything right. is wet, it's and sloppy, imagine. and it's and it's junk. But these are things that still mean so much to her, right? That this is what is left. These are the fragments of her history, and those things. Every single one of those things carries so much emotional weight that, against my better judgment, every time and, and still mm. to this day, when I talk to Joy and she says, "Hey, can you?" I have such a big problem, you know, trying to balance my work and wanting to do stuff because, you know, we've grown very close and, you know, every time she says something, it reminds me of what my mom went through in 94, mm. uh, you know, the, the same thing. And, right. and I want to help her as much as I can. And, uh, you know, just to, to help her get her life back together. But I, I'm sorry, when I'm we went yeah. to, didn't those letters uh, from her son have particular importance to her? Yes. Yeah. And, and, uh, and, and like I said, those are, those are the last last bits of communication she got from him. And, and, yeah, I mean, that's, that's her story to tell, but, and, and we got some of that, I think, um, in, in her, in her interview, um, you know, but I, I know she was very sensitive about it. So that's why I, I don't want to go too deep into sure, it. But sure. Actually, when, when we interviewed her, actually, um, you know, Josh asked me if, if I wanted to do the interview and I was like, no, I can't, I'm just going to start bawling, you uh. know? And so I, I kind of stayed off camera. Um, and, you know, he had asked her, um, you know, as he go through this, like, what, what's the most difficult part of this? You know, what, 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 what would help you the most right now? And so now we've been, you know, trying to kind of help her um, raise money because she had worked very hard so that she could retire early. Um, okay. She had okay. put all her money into this place. Um, she basically had no no flood insurance because that's only covered within the mortgage, and she paid off the mortgage last year. So, you know, she basically okay. has lost everything. And she said, you know, Josh, I just woke up at three o'clock this morning uh, crying because mm -hmm. I just realized that, you know, um, I'm now um, older. I'm not going to give her age. But, but yes, I understand. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm older and uh, and I need to go back to work. Uh -huh. And it's, it's not that I have a problem going back to work, but I need to go and do interviews. And first of all, I, I have not kept up with technology, which has changed a lot. But more importantly, yes. I own two pairs of shorts and like three t-shirts. All of my business clothes are somewhere in Lake Houston, somewhere in the San Jacinto River, everything, the wardrobe that I had, you know, my, my business attire from years, it's all in there. And I, like, you know, what am I going to do? And I know that a lot of people will, will look at that and they'll say, well, you, you have some organizations, you know, you've got, right. uh, you know, Dress for Success. But, but the thing is that organizations like Dress for Success, as well-intentioned as they are, um, they're sure. tapped out. You know, they, they're, they're constantly, you know, doing this, this type of thing. And now you're talking about this flood that affected so many people. Right. Um, there's everybody has that, that same level of need. And, um, you know, and it's, you know, Joy for me is, um, you know, she's, she's an amazing woman. She, um, you know, her, her father was in the Marine Corps. She was in the Marine Corps. Her son was in the Marine Corps, um, you know, and then, and then she just, you know, went to work and, and just was a very focused person. And, and uh, you know, when you talk to, you know, her neighbors and stuff, they're like, oh, you know, she was, she was wonderful. You know, she had this garden out in front that she loved. She was, you know, very peaceful, but she was always right. entertaining people and hosting people and, you know, kind of used to being super independent. And now she's having to, you know, kind of rebuild and, and start from scratch, which is, um, you know, for me, it's, it's very difficult to, to stomach. But, you know, unfortunately for Joy, I'm stuck with her for, for you know, for the rest <laughs> of her life. And, uh, well, it and sounds it's like it's a good thing. Too, so. Yeah, so, it, it so, I mean, she's she's wonderful. So. No, I'm sorry, I, I I interrupted you. I apologize. I, I was going to ask again, since this is a since we're on the radio, um, is Joy's story already up, or was that GoFundMe page yet to be built? 
Um, her her GoFundMe is actually up. It, it doesn't is live. have the, okay. Yeah, um, her daughter started one almost immediately, um, and uh, but it, it just has um, some photos that uh, you know that that I had taken. Um, and uh, the Jennifer, her, her daughter, had taken. And, uh, you know, people have been contributing. Um, you know, you can look it up, GoFundMe, um, Joy Rizzi uh, is the last name, R-I-Z-Z-I. -I. Um, and, uh, and you'll see it. Um, you'll be able to tell. It's, it's the house that is, you know, not there anymore. So sure, sure. It's, yeah, it's, I, it's a pretty I, obvious one. And just to, for, and, for those who are listening, again, you're listening to the Good News Show uh, here on uh, – uh, Lone Star Community Radio, um, I will connect with you after the show to make sure that mm -hmm. I have it correct. Uh, and then sure. for those who are listening uh, or those who want to check it out now, you can check out Joy Rizzi's, R-I-Z-Z-I. Uh, I will also link to it from the Good News Show uh, Facebook page. Uh, and uh, and certainly it same, seems like, by the way you're talking, that with just a few photos, there may be something else coming, uh, uh, some film footage yes. or some, some edited film, which will which perhaps will be added to it at some other point later. Yeah. Okay. So okay. right now we, so, so we spent a week um, visiting all different parts of Houston. So um, we were in Baytown, we were um, out in Katy in Sugarland. We were in uh, the third, fourth and fifth ward. Uh, we were in Conroe, we were in Kingwood. So we really tried to, you know, um, spread ourselves out and, and tell different stories, um, not just of, you know, um, any, any one particular community or one socioeconomic level. Um, you know, we, we were out in, you know, Cinco Ranch, which is a, a bit more affluent. But also, you know, in, in that, actually, if, if you don't mind me kind of taking a couple more minutes to, to point this one out too, but that one was a very interesting yeah, area. And just, because, just so you know, Alex, we have about a minute till we have to go to break, but I, go ahead, I want you to finish your, finish, finish your thought, and I know that we – we lose you, and we know that we have to disconnect uh, because of your other job obligation. So, as we as you conclude your story, uh, I'll I'll say thank you at the end of that, and then we'll go to break. So, just to let you know, we have Perfect. about a minute. Perfect. So, uh, you know, Cinco Ranch was was one that, that you know when we were going through, and this is my own shedding my own guilt out in front of everyone. I said, <laughs> you know, these houses, this this is a more affluent neighborhood. You know, is this really the most impactful? Is this where we can best help? Um, or should we be someplace else where there isn't, you know, I mean, we're talking about people that probably have savings. And this was me making a lot of very incorrect assumptions as I came to find out, mm. to, to find out is, is we went and we started talking to people. You know, now we're talking to people who are saying, well, yeah, you know, we have a higher household income. But that household income um, now uh, does not allow us to get any grants um, for, for rebuilding. Instead, what we get is a guaranteed business loan. And so, uh -huh. you know, as it is, I had worked really hard to kind of bring down my mortgage to some place that, that was manageable. Right. And now I've lost everything. And the government's way of assisting me is to basically put a second mortgage on my house that I can't afford. And I'm in a bad spot because I also can't sell the house and move to some place that's more, uh, you know, affordable. And so it's, it's a very different story. But people who are suffering all the same, and and to me that was the thing that was most fascinating about this project and talking to different people from different walks of life. That um, you know everybody's struggle is is a little bit different, and it's yes. all held together by uh, you know by by Harvey. Yeah, so. and it, and it is interesting to to, to note that uh, regardless of what the outside facade looks like, they're still suffering, regardless of as you've already mentioned uh, the socioeconomic uh, level. Uh, so, yeah. and so, Alex, I know that uh, that you need to run uh, to, like I said, to complete the rest of your business obligations for the balance of your day. So, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we'll look forward to connecting you with you uh, downstream a little bit in, a, in the coming weeks to make sure that as the stories are continuing to progress on the different uh, uh, films that you've made and different GoFundMe's, we'll be visiting with you. And uh, again, thank Perfect. you so much for for joining us on the on the Good New Show today. I really appreciate I it. Thank you very much. I, I greatly appreciate the forum and uh, and, and your audience for um, you know for listening and, and, and helping out. The videos um, are being edited now, and they should be coming out probably in the next couple of days. Uh, hopefully, next week we'll, we'll have we'll have them uh, up and running. But um, and, okay. and Tom and I will be following up with all the families as well to, to keep in touch with them. So. 
Thank Perfect. you. Uh, thank you very much. You're, you're very welcome. We look forward to talking with you soon. Safe travels, man. Yep. So we'll go to uh, we'll go and do a quick break here for a couple of moments, and we'll be back to finish up our time with Tom uh, here in studio with the Good News Show. Be back in a couple of minutes. You are- Lone Star Community Radio is looking for those who are interested in hosting their own talk show with monthly and weekly slots available on Conroe's FM 104.5 and 106.1 and on IRLoneStar.com. Start your own podcast, create your first YouTube channel, and be on TV. Contact Lone Star Community Radio online at IRLoneStar.com or call the station message line at 936-647-3776. Hispanic Chamber Connections with Dr. Carlos Sanchez president of the Woodlands Conroe Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, featuring event announcements, member highlights, and more. Tuesdays at 1 p.m., broadcasting from the heart of Conroe, Texas, on IRLoneStar.com and Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1. Welcome back to the Good News Show with uh, Ted Cox. We're broadcasting out of Conroe, Texas, uh, on 104.5, 106.1. You can also stream live on IRLoneStar.com or our app. Uh, during the uh, the first part of our show, we've been talking with uh, Tom and Alex. Uh, Alex was in Miami uh, today conducting business, but he was able to join us via the phone. And for the balance of our time, as we go uh, to the bottom of the hour, uh, we're going to be talking to uh, to Tom uh, and um, uh, before he gets started, I'm going to ask him the same question that I asked Alex some of the either the most impactful or a couple of the impactful stories that he was able to document. Uh, but if you would like to see some of his work, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put a shameless plug in because I know he's a pretty humble guy, uh, is a Tom Darren Photo. Let me spell that for you. T-O-M-D-A-R-I-N-P-H-O-T-O.com. Uh, and you can see a lot of his work and in particular the photos that he uh, took and some of the stories that he recorded uh, in the aftermath of, of Hurricane Harvey. And as we were talking about, while in the midst of all of this devastation and in the midst of some of the national media coming in with the sensational stories, uh, it is folks like Tom and Alex who who were on the ground level and actually documented uh, just as as he would call, as they would call themselves, just regular people talking to regular people who, in many cases, lost everything. And so uh, we will also link uh, to both of these websites from our Facebook page, which is the Good News Show on Facebook. And so now I'll, I'll turn it over to Tom uh, for, for the brief moments that we have together and, and ask him to relate some of the more touching stories that he witnessed uh, during the storm and anything else that he would like to impart uh, as part of this photojournalistic uh, documenting of his program. Well, th- uh, thanks for that. Yeah. You know, my answer is kind of a, it's a little bit twofold, right? Yeah. So I want to talk, I guess one of the things that uh, that really impacted me and uh, it was just seeing how local churches and organization really stepped up, you know, during the worst of it. I remember, you know, that Saturday and Sunday, Harvey was just pounding mm. the woodlands in Montgomery County, right? Yes. And so I started sending off some texts to some people I knew, like, hey, you know, what's going on? Because, you know, we're hearing rumors that are people losing their houses, the the, the flood. And so, you know, uh, churches start opening their doors. Yes. You know, shelters, right? And, uh, you know, I, I, the first one I visited was that Monday when it was still kind of dodgy trying to get around was uh, a little church up in Conroe. I think it's, uh, huh. I get the name. Sure. It's, sorry about that. That's okay. While you're pulling it up, it, it was uh, certainly heartening to see a lot of the churches come. And I just saw a report. I can't verify its uh, its uh, its authenticity in as much as what it was accurate, but it, I saw a report just recently talking about Christian giving versus FEMA giving. No, exactly. So I'll, I'll yeah. let that. I'll let you tell tell a little bit about that. No, exactly. And you know, like I said, I spent a lot of my career over, overseas, right? And 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 to be honest, I, I'm a believer, but I'm also sure. a very kind of critical. I have a very critical view of. I don't want to sound sure. snooty when I say this, but yeah. American style Christianity mm, sometimes, okay. right? Yeah, yeah. So, but you know, I was really surprised. In, in a very positive way, seeing churches like the one under over fellowship of Conroe, small over, church, 
Under over. Yeah, under over fellowship. Under right? over fellowship. Okay. Up in Conroe, right? Uh huh. Open the doors. You know, the rain was still falling, people losing their homes. And, you know, one of the things that got me about what churches did, they did not only provide basic food, basic shelter, but they really went out of their way to make people feel welcome. And, mm. you know, a lot of hugs. People went in to volunteer. Even during the rain, church members were going in to go in to feed, to clothe, you know? It was very impressive. Same thing, um, even out in New Caney. I mean, that part over there, that part of the, uh, of the county, a lot of Spanish speakers, a lot of immigrants. Right. And a lot of them undocumented, right? Right. And so, you know, uh, Pastor Mark Grimes over the uh, cowboy, uh, the, the Caney Creek Cowboy Church, those guys were going out in the back roads telling people, mm. please come. No questions asked, please come. You need food, you need water, please come. Okay. You know, uh, seeing stuff like that, even here in the Woodlands, uh, the Woodlands Church, the big one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they had so many volunteers, they had to turn them away, you know, bringing people in. And so, to me, what really impacted me, to a large degree, was seeing that. Okay. Because this was a very tough time, and I think people looked beyond their political ideas, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. their economic ideas, and got to the heart of the matter, which was, in their heart, serving Christ. Okay. And helping another person, right? Now, were you able to capture any of these on uh, yes. on film or okay? Yeah, yeah, and so because some of the pictures that I've seen on your website, uh, especially the one looks like an older um, Hispanic man with his daughter. Or yes, a, that one was really touching when I saw it. I thought this is an amazing. I'd love to know the story behind that. I don't want to interrupt your yeah, story. Yeah, no, no, if you no. want to tell? Yeah, but that story was or that photo was particularly poignant. Yeah, and, and you know, it's sort of like, you know, you know, Alex told his story about impacting me the most. Yes. And I guess yes. that little girl, Bethlehem, um, and that was the story that really got my heart. Yeah, Interesting. Was, okay. Yeah, so, so. Is it the one with the cat that's on your. No, it's right, the me, one. It's the. Let me scroll over a little bit. The one with the grandfather, the black and white one. And she's got a rattle. Yes. Okay. Right. Yeah. So, and just for those who are joining us and maybe uh, streaming uh, and you're at your computer, it's Tom Darren, T O M D A R I N, photo.com. Uh, and it's the fourth or fifth on the scroll bar. Uh, you'll see the photo that we're talking about if you're tracking online. Yeah. So, so Alex and I and the other photographers, we got wind that, like, as he mentioned, there were people living on the tents on the street, right? Yeah. And so uh, I was out looking. He was out looking. He called me up. He says, I found them. And he says, you would not believe, you know, what it's like over here. So I got over there, right? And uh, the street, it's in, I think it's the Woodlock area, right? Okay. Uh, uh, just off of 242. Yes. It looked like a bomb blast, you know? And, uh, you know, there were churches going over there trying to help people as they could. Um, but the need was so great. You know, we were over there late in the day. Uh, and so as the sun's, I mean, there's a lot of mosquitoes, right? Mm. Sun's going down, and you could just see swarms, black swarms of mosquitoes coming mm. off of San Jacinto, you know? And this little girl... She had at least 150 mosquito bites on her, right? And, uh, mm. you know, that's what really got me. And, you know, she couldn't tell me her story because she could barely communicate. She could right. barely swap the bugs away, right? Right. But to me, I, I, it just something hit me that, you know, so much of what we claim to believe as someone like myself who's a believer, yes. you know, that we hold sacred yes. in our faith walk. That this is a need that has to be met right now. And so a lot of churches in that area has re have, you know, stepped up way before any government organization. Right. And I will say, you know, uh, you know, the, Kevin Brady's office has done a lot yes. to help people in this part of the wood. And, you know, he's, he's been, a, you know, I commend him for that. And I also commend the churches that have really stepped up to go out and reach out. You know, I know people from Faith Bible Church. Right. Um, uh, the church we go to, Hope Point, have gone out um, everywhere. People are going out, food, water, needs. I mean, this is a situation where, you know, we talk about the Good Samaritan. Right. I mean, this has been a situation like this. Right. These are our neighbors. Yes, yes. exactly. Even, you know, and, and I think, you know, we've been able to take it to the heart rather than just what, you know, what it's, it's one thing to say, I believe this, but it's another thing to act on it because you need to have the heart to act. And I've seen a lot of people have the heart to act. And so, you know, I can be cynical about stuff, and I try to be objective when it comes to journalism or writing, but I've been, uh, I've been moved by what I've seen, the, the action of people going out to help. 
And I've seen a couple of your Facebook posts, uh, and I don't know if it's in the same area or not, but even today, they're still intense yes. today, yeah. right? I yeah. mean, they're, they're, the destruction was such that even today, they're living in tents and they're still being, uh, they still have needs, whether it's the basic needs of waters yeah. and diapers and so forth, or, or even bug spray. I, I can tell from your photo, and again, this is on TomDarrenPhoto.com, that she, her arms and her face, yeah. just you can tell that there's lots of bug bites. And is this her, her father or grandfather? Her grandfather. Her grandfather, mm-hmm. who who just looks as weary as I've ever seen anybody look. No, and, and I think, you know, a situation in some parts of the, uh, the county, especially in the immigrant community, where, you know, these are people who work in uh, cutting our yards, people cutting yes. down our trees, people who work in the restaurants, right? So they're in a situation where they have to put in a full day's work to earn money. They go home at the end of the day and have to clean up as best as they can. Right. And this is where I think, you know, some churches are taking the more strategic view of like, okay, let's do short term, medium term, and long term. Mm. And so you're seeing churches adopt families. You're seeing churches ad- adopt streets. And, um, you know, that's what it's going to take for right. these people. Because, you know, once again, you know, we're in a situation where we're seeing people who are hit hard who might not have the financial wherewithal to put down a three-month deposit on, a, on an apartment in the Woodlands or Conroe. Right. This is just the economic reality they face, right? And even if they did, perhaps there might not be av- many available. No, exactly. Because those houses that have, are in inha- inhabitable, uninhabitable now or in need of repair, they're probably taking a lot of the vacancies that were there. Yeah. So r- even beyond just the ability to afford it, which would be an obstacle, if they were to afford it, perhaps they couldn't because – of vacancy rates, which may have dropped since the, since the Harvey began. No, exactly. And I know some churches are out <clears throat> looking for like uh, campers, right? It was sort of like a short-term solution. For, like a camper. Yeah. Okay. You know, for families as they see if they can, because a lot of this, um, uh, where the, a lot of the foes were taken off of uh, 242 in the River Oaks area. Okay. I mean, you know, those houses, the trailers are buckled, ruined. It's total loss. And so the houses that can be salvaged, people are trying to work on them. Trying okay. to get them in, in living conditions, but most of the people still are still living in tents, you know. Right. And you know, the, th- thank the Lord that you know yeah. for that week after Harvey, the temperatures were nice. It was nice, but temps still. are climbing up, humidity. Right. And you know, and the standing water that's still there, yeah, is still breeding mosquitoes. Yeah, and I know they've been out spraying, but still, you know, I think what we had a situation too is because you know it's just such a, a daunting task to clean up. You know, you've got a lot of trash and waste from the flood on the street, rotting food, um, spin and breeding ground for snakes, right. rats, other bugs. So, In your experience, as you've captured a lot of this on, on uh, both photo and perhaps some video as well as the stories, uh, for those who are listening who would like to get involved, what, what would maybe be some of your advice on how they can get involved, whether it's Hope Point or Faith Bible mm-hmm. or some of the other churches? or, And I'm, I'm asking you uh, this perhaps in an unfair way, Anything else that you may be involved that people can uh, can get involved? What would be your advice? My advice would be to find an organization that is looking more sort of like the short term to the midterm to the long term. Right? Okay. Because this is going to be an effort of years. It's not going to be an effort of like two or three weeks. We can get back on our feet and everything's going to be A-OK. Okay. You know, I think, you know, people have been dropping off water. They've been dropping off Buck's brain. That's wonderful, you know. But this is where really... <laughs> Like the story of the, the Good Samaritan. The good, yes. You know, the Samaritan, he not only put the guy in a hotel, yes. right? Yes. He paid for it for how many days? Yeah. And he says, when I come back, when I come back. I, you know, if I still have money, I'll pay more. Right. And I think we're in a situation because, you know, I was speaking with someone and, you know, sure. you know, we don't get into politics, but, you know, he told me, he says, you know, I don't agree why their parents came here. Their parents broke the mm. law. But when I see these kids, I have to act on what Jesus tells me. Right. And I think that's a situation where we see with a lot of people that the issue of compassion, right? Not politics, not economics, but compassion. Right. Yeah. And so uh, I know we have just about one more minute before we break at the bottom, bottom of the hour. Um, uh, we've talked about your stories and, and certainly with Alex and technology. Uh, what are some of the other things that, that you're engaged in as a business? If, if people wanted um, uh uh, photography work or video work or writing or uh, are there other things that you can you would be able to offer uh, i know we've talked about how to get involved with hurricane harvey uh, recovery but tell us a little bit maybe about your business and how people could contact you 
if they would like to have your services. Yeah, you know, I'm on, on the Facebook page, uh, Tom Darren Lisky Photography, and also, you know, my, uh, my, my photo f- page. And so, you know, I'm not a, I think, uh, I, I, not, okay. not yeah, too, I know this is a bit unfair, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but I know that you're doing all of this, and these are wonderful stories, but I, I didn't want to miss, you know, the opportunity if someone were wanted to come and engage, yeah. either for a family portrait, which I noticed on your website, or corporate video work, that if people yeah. wanted to get in touch with you, I didn't want to lose the opportunity for you to, what, what, to, what, to have people reach out and, and have you do some work for you, because your work is stellar work. Anybody who would go to your Tom Darren photo uh, dot com site they would recognize very soon that that your work is really world class is really stellar work and well, well, people may want you know. to have you do their work for them well, well thank you for that and i know when i was out <laughs> taking pictures someone asked me it's like well you can actually make money doing photography and i said you know my wife asked me the same thing <laughs> so, i love wives <laughs> you know? my wife uh, was has always been about two steps ahead of me exactly. so uh, yeah. so she is both my conscience as well as my my push when I need it. So exactly. So thank you very much. Well, we are uh, going to go to the bottom of the break here in just a few seconds. I just want to uh, thank uh, Tom uh, Liskey uh, for joining us here in studio and Alex via the phone to tell their stories that they captured uh, so well uh, during the aftermath of Harvey. And again, we will link to these uh, from our Facebook page that uh, the good news program from our Facebook page. So you'll be able to see Tom and Alex's work. And if you are so inclined to participate in the GoFundMe pages, you will have links to those as well. Uh, so you are listening to the good news uh, show here on Conroe's own Lone Star Community Radio. Uh, we'll be back in just a couple of minutes to talk to uh, the 80 players in their upcoming production of Harvey. Talk to you in a few minutes. A Lone Star Community Radio is looking for those who are interested in hosting their own talk show with monthly and weekly slots available on Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1, and on IRLoneStar.com. Start your own podcast, create your first YouTube channel, and be on TV. Contact Lone Star Community Radio online at IRLoneStar.com or call the station message line at 936 647 3776 to take your first step into the radio world. Hey, Montgomery County, it's me, C.C. Holmes, and I would personally like to take this time to invite you, that's right, you, to join me every Saturday and Sunday from 3 until 7 p.m., where I will bring you the very best, the very best of smooth jazz, classic jazz, and indeed, Yes, the soulful sounds of the 60s, 70s, and 80s. So come along and get jazzy with me. That's right, jazzy. (laughs) Right here, of course, on Conroe's 104.5 and 106.1 FM or worldwide at IRLongstar.com. Welcome back to the Good News Show on Conroe's own Lone Star Community Radio. We're broadcasting out of the heart of Conroe, Texas uh, on Conroe's FM 105.4 and 106.1. And if you're near a computer or your app, you can uh, stream live on uh, IRLoneStar.com or download our app. Well, in the last uh, hour and a half, we were, we've been talking with a couple of gentlemen, Tom and Alex, who have been photo uh, uh, capturing with their photojournalistic uh, skills uh, all of the aftermath of Harvey. They've caught some really wonderful stories. And again, we will link to those on our Facebook page if you want to look at the pictures and listen to the stories and, and participate in the GoFundMe and the recovery, as they so well told us, is going to take not only weeks, but perhaps months uh, for some of these families. Uh, now, however, we're going to shift gears a little bit uh, we uh, want to bring on who is joining us now uh, online with um, uh, with the AD players, uh, Jake Speck. Or Jake, are you on with us? I'm here. Hey, great! Thank you for joining us. So uh, Jake will be uh, from now until the top of the hour, the three o'clock hour Central Time, uh, talking about uh, the AD players and uh, their uh, their uh, production, not only of Harvey, which I think is a little bit uh, humorous. I'll let him. I'll let him talk all about the production, 
Uh, but first, Jake, I'd like, uh, if you don't mind, introduce uh, our listeners here in the uh, North Houston area in Conroe and uh, Spring in the Woodlands. Uh, a little bit about maybe not only introduce yourself, but also the 80 players, and then we can talk a little bit about the production. Absolutely. I'd be delighted to. Thank you so much for having me, first of all. You're welcome. Uh, on the show. Um, I am a brand-new Houstonian. Uh, myself and my family moved here from Nashville, Tennessee, on August the 8th. <laughs> um, so I have not been in town that long. Okay. Um, I came here to take the job of the executive director at the AD Players. So it was an interesting month to move to Houston, I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know uh, Nashville uh, probably gets a little weather, maybe a little snow, but it gets all four seasons. Uh, I'm actually originally from South Carolina. Uh, but this must have been oh, wow. a shock to, uh, to, to, to come right into Houston and go, welcome to Houston. Here's a Category 5 hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we, um, I've lived uh, in Dallas during my life, and I've lived in New York City during my life in Nashville, but really, really never anywhere with a climate that uh, calls for hurricanes. So um, we were just talking to everybody we could about how, you know, how to prepare and that sort of thing because it's nothing we had ever experienced before. Um, we were tremendously fortunate and blessed that um, we were really not directly impacted by the hurricane and, okay. and even further blessed that our theater um, really didn't um, be on some very minor leaks and things really experienced no damage as well. So we were very fortunate in that regard. Well, good, good. And, okay, so tell us, tell us a little bit about, uh, about the 80 players and, and what the, uh, the, the troupe, uh, or I may be misusing that name, but the group – uh, is all about. You have a very interesting uh, description of yourself on your website. So tell people who may not be familiar with the 80 players kind of what, uh, what your group is all about. So 80 Players is a professional theater company here in Houston uh, going into our 51st season. So oh. uh, the organization has been around for over 50 years. Um, but just six months ago, we opened our brand new $18 million facility uh, here on Westheimer, right in the, in the Galleria district, um, not even a mile from the, the mall itself. Okay. Um, it's a gorgeous state of the art uh, venue uh, that's just, it's a really spectacular place to be, to do shows. But um, the 80 Players was founded by Jeanette Cliff George um, here in Houston, as I said, 50 years ago. Um, Jeanette is probably uh, most well known for playing Corey Tin Boom in the movie The Hiding Place. Um, oh. That. Uh, it was in late late seventies, I believe. Um, she was nominated for a Golden Globe Award for that, and got a, um, a lot of notoriety for that film. Um, and um, probably could have gone on to do um, many more movies uh, in Hollywood, but she chose to come back to Houston and, and make the AD players her life's work. Okay. Um, we are a Christian organization, um, and uh, we're the only Christian organization that I'm aware of that exists in the professional theater realm um, in the Houston area. Um, but we, um, we're a fully professional company. We, uh, we're associated with Actors' Equity Association, which is the professional union for um, actors and stage managers. Um, and, you know, as I, as I always say it, though, though our, our Christian values and, and mission statements certainly influence um, what we do here and the way that we present things, um, it, it's not all bathrobes and beards and Bible plays, as I like to say it. <laughs> um, we do a lot more than just that, and we really are producing on a, on a very high level here. Um, but uh, you can imagine my, um, my surprise uh, when – not only did we find out there was a hurricane coming, but that that hurricane was called Harvey um, <laughs> when uh, we – the decision was made well over a year ago to open our 51st season here in Houston with the play Harvey. Um, so funny. And we still can't quite get over the irony of that. Um, and, you know, when uh, – it was, it was almost, to be honest with you, yeah. uh, before the storm actually hit – you know, we were kind of joking about it and going, oh, my gosh, can you believe there's supposed to be a hurricane called Harvey and we're doing this show called Harvey and, you know, yeah. how, how can we use that to promote the show? And, of course, when we saw uh, how devastating the storm actually was, um, it was quite sobering, and I immediately um, just kind of gathered some of our core leadership team and said, guys, we really have to do something. Right. Um with this to, to, to give back. Um, and, 
you know, we kind of took it um, as a sign that perhaps it wasn't an accident that we had chosen to do a show called Harvey uh, <laughs> at this time, and perhaps that was our challenge to use this, this opportunity to give back and make a difference. Um, and I think we that... were also incredibly uh-huh. fortunate that we were one of the only major theater venues in town that wasn't affected. Um, yeah, I'm sure you and your listeners have, yes. have read all about the Wortham Center and the, yes. the Alley Theater, of course, that just experienced some catastrophic damage, as well as the Hobby Center. Um, those right there in the theater district uh, were really um, devastated by the storm. And like I said, we sustained very minor damages. Um, so, of course, we're grateful for that, but we felt yes. like perhaps we had a, a responsibility to do something with that. Um, so when we all kind of gathered together and said, what are we going to do to help in this situation, especially, honestly, given our, our faith-based mission, um, I felt like we had an opportunity to kind of put our money where our mouth is. Um, and so we created uh, a series of what we're calling um, fundraising and arts access initiatives called Harvey for Harvey. <laughs> okay. All right. So it's Harvey for Harvey. And okay. basically uh, what that n- includes is, um, first of all, we're donating 20% of the proceeds from the entire run of the show to uh, two different local disaster relief organizations. One is the Houston Furniture Bank, um, which provides uh, furniture for all those that lost furniture um, when their homes flooded. And the other one is the Harvey Arts Recovery Fund, uh, which goes to help um, arts organizations in Houston that were directly impacted by the storm. Um, We felt as a local arts organization we wanted to do something to help our fellow arts organizations that experienced um, severe, uh, severe damage during the storms. Okay. Um, the second thing we're doing yes. is we are making the entire run of Harvey f- absolutely free to any first responders or anyone who's home flooded during the storm. Oh, okay. Um, the show runs all the way through October 1st. Um, if you, if you're home flooded or you're a first responder and you want to come see the show, all you have to do is call our box office and that number is 713-526-2721. All you have to do is call uh, and make your reservation for the performance you'd like to come to. You can come for free, no questions asked. Um, Harvey is a, it's a classic Pulitzer Prize winning comedy. It was a very famous film with yes. Jimmy Stewart. Um, it's good for a lot of laughs, and we, we just want to provide you know um, people who have been through a lot an opportunity just to come and, and get away from it for a couple of hours, and that's on us. Okay. Um, and we are making all of our Sunday matinees, which we have two more coming up this coming Sunday and the Sunday after, we're making those family days for all families who were affected by the storm. So if you are a family with children who was affected by Harvey, you can come to that show, and not only can you see that show for free, but our Theater Arts Academy here at AD Players is putting on uh, free mini arts camps in our lobby for children ages 5 to 11, as well as a special pop-up performance of our two-man, or I shouldn't say man, it's a man and a woman, our two-person <laughs> touring version of uh, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Oh. Um, while um, kids that are 12 or in order, we feel like the show is appropriate for them to go in and watch with their parents. So. Those are kind of all the things that we're doing. Uh, we're also collecting donations on site at every performance for the two organizations I mentioned earlier. Um, but th- those are the things that we're doing during the run of Harvey to try to help our community. Um, the response has just really been fabulous. Um, uh, I-, I have been on hand at every performance and have had several um, humbling and wonderful conversations with people who have taken advantage of this, who have come to the show, who were affected by the storm. And uh, it's something that I'm just thrilled our company was able to do um, and, and help in a small way. Uh, I, I do believe that um, the arts and theater specifically um, has the power to, to heal. Um, and I'm glad um, and very proud that we're able to help this community do that in, in a small but I think significant way. Okay. Well, that, and that is all wonderful uh, information. I know we ran through a lot of that really quickly. So, uh, what I'd like to do is repeat a couple of those things. Uh, we'll go to break in just a, in just a minute or so. And as we come out of break, uh, what I'd like to do for you to do, for those who aren't familiar with Harvey's, tell us a little bit about what the play is about, uh, and sure. then and then the uh, and then different aspects of that. So let, let's just repeat a couple of couple of things. So you opened uh, on September the fifteenth, and you uh, the last show will be October the first. 
If people Correct. are uh-huh. interested in coming, so this is uh, in buying tickets or interested in coming, do they have to buy the tickets in advance or can they buy them at the door? Uh, assuming that there's availability, you can buy them at the door. We always encourage people to buy in advance to get the best seats. Okay. Um, but um, you, you you could purchase them at the door. Um, but the two ways to purchase in advance would be either on our website, which is just adplayers.org, okay. or uh, by calling our box office, which that number, again, is 713-526-2721. Okay. And I should say, if you're a first responder yes. or your home was flooded – and we're inviting you to come for free, you cannot reserve those on the website. You would need to call the box office or just show up and we'll find you a seat. Okay, yeah, and that's what I wanted to make sure that we were clear on. And, and just the, the the folks that may want to purchase tickets, you, you certainly have the two venues available to you. That's adplayers.org uh, or the box office. It's 713-526-2721. If you're a first responder uh, or your home was flooded uh, what you're saying, just to make sure we, we're clear for all of everyone who's listening, uh, you cannot do that through the website. You must call the 713-526-2721. Now, do you recommend uh, those first responders or those folks that have had their homes flooded, do they have to call in advance or are you recommending it? Because uh, if some of the, a lot of the shows are being now sold out, uh, I, I would certainly, certainly recommend it. Okay, good. Um, it's good. Not, if, if somebody shows up, we're going to do our best to get them in, but I would certainly recommend it. That way you're guaranteed a seat. And, uh, of course, we can, we can if, the sooner you call, the better seat we can give you. Um, and I should say as well, for anyone who wants to take advantage of those family days um, where anyone affected by the flood can bring their kids, um, if you have children ages 5 to 11 that you would like to participate in yes. the free uh, camp in the lobby and the pop-up performance of the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, we really do need you to call in advance and tell us the names and the ages of those kids so that our um, our teaching staff at the Theater Arts Academy can be prepared. Okay, and we'll we'll link to this on our, on our Facebook page, which is the Good News Program. Uh, we're going to uh, take a, a quick break now, uh, and uh, when we come back, uh, I'd love for you to spend just a few minutes for those of, for those of us who might not have seen the Jimmy Stewart uh, uh, movie, are are unfamiliar with what Harvey uh, is all about. Maybe you can spend a few minutes to tell us a little bit about the play, uh, and then we'll probably repeat a couple of things, especially the family uh, family, uh, activities that you have on on Sunday. Uh, So we'll be back in just a, a couple of moments. You're listening to the Good News Program on Lone Star Community Radio. Listen in Mondays at noon to hear Conroe news from local nonprofits, businesses, upcoming events, Conroe Park events, news stories, and information that matters to you with your host, Margie Taylor of Taylorized PR. For more information about being a guest, visit IRLoneStar.com slash Conroe Culture. Lone Star Community Radio is ready for the summer. If you or anyone you know is looking for summer internship opportunities, Lone Star Community Radio is a great place to grab the mic and be on the air. Lone Star Community Radio offers a great opportunity to those interested in learning about the radio world all year round. Be an on-air personality, talk show producer, or YouTube TV podcast editor. Contact the station at info at IRLoneStar.com or call the station's message line at 936-647-3776 if you are interested. And welcome back. You're listening to the Good News Program on Lone Star Community Radio. We're broadcasting out of the heart of Conroe on Conroe's FM 104.5 and 106.1. Uh, streaming live on IRLoneStar.com, or you can download our app. Um, on the phone, we have uh, with us Jake Speck, who is the executive director, the new executive director, which is Welcome to Houston. Here's Hurricane Harvey of the, uh, of the um, uh, faith-based uh, uh, theater community uh, called AD Players, and you can find them on either their, home, their uh, uh, Facebook page or on ADPlayers.org. Uh, so right now they have uh, a production ongoing, which was planned uh, some time ago, but uh, just so happens as a funny, uh, humorous co- coincidence, uh, the story or the play Harvey. 
And so, uh, Jake, welcome back. We have uh, about uh, six minutes or so before we have to break hard at the top of the hour. So if you would, please, for those who aren't familiar with the story, uh, tell us a little bit about what the play is all about. Sure. Well, um, Harvey is a, a Pulitzer Prize winning comedy by Mary Chase. Um, the play uh, originally premiered um, just after uh, World War II, and um, Mary Chase, uh, she wrote it as a, as a comedy to help kind of lift the spirits of the nation mm. um, after that war. Okay. Um, and while it was on Broadway, Jimmy Stewart stepped into the role a few times while it was still um, a play on Broadway in New York, and then, of course, um, later went on to star in the film version. But um, it's, a, it's a very, very funny show. Um, the central character is uh, Elwood P. Dowd, okay. and Elwood is a very um, eccentric guy, to say the least. Okay. And um, <laughs> he has a, a best friend who is an imaginary, uh, invisible bunny. Okay. And uh, a six-foot-six rabbit that no one can see. <laughs> and uh, in the play, they refer to oh. him as a puka. Okay. Um, which is actually a real thing. It's a real. It's a real word. Okay. Um, which is kind of a um, mythological um, animal spirit, I guess you could say. Okay. And um, it's one of those plays where the one, the the character that's actually a little crazy is the one who comes off um, seeming the most sane, and everybody around him um, is a little all over the place. Uh, and he Elwood hangs out a lot in in bars, and it's kind of about. Uh, his family trying to deal with him and his invis- invisible friend. Okay. Um, but, uh, <laughs> you know, there's there's more to it than just that. Sure. Um, it, 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 Elwood describes it in, in the show as, uh, you know, why do you hang out with Harvey? Why do you keep Harvey around? And he talks about that when he's in these bars with these people, that, that, that people who come to these places are, are hurting, and when they see Harvey, um, you know, Harvey is bigger and better than anything in their lives, and they're just drawn to Harvey. Okay. Um, and, you know, it's somewhat of a metaphor for people that are, that are hurting. Um, and it's, um, but most of all, it's just a really fun comedy. Um, our cast is fabulous. Um, we have some of our resident company members here at 80 Players, um, which 80 Players is one of the only professional theater companies uh, in the country who still maintains a resident acting company year round. Ah, okay. Um, Funny enough, one of the only other companies in America that does that is also in Houston, which is the Alley Theater. Oh, well, that's um, interesting. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but but um, so we have um, some of our resident company members who are fabulous in the show, and then we've got some other um, uh, professional actors here from the Houston community that are kind of top-tier actors that work at all the major professional theater companies in town are in this production as well. Um, we've got a massive, gorgeous, um, huge unit set there's actually two sets uh, for the show that switch between um, the sanatorium and uh, Elwood's home. Ah. Uh, but it's just a really fun, lighthearted comedy um, that, you know, frankly, I think is is, is uh, the perfect thing to see in the midst of, of a tragedy like this. For sure. um, it's yes. just a really fun, lighthearted, uh, great show. Um Ooh. And like I said, it's, it's very family-friendly. Uh, we recommend it for ages 12 and up. Uh, there's certainly nothing inappropriate in it for anyone younger than that. just might be a little over their heads. Okay. Well, and we only have a couple more minutes uh, before we, uh, we have to end the show. So let's, let's make sure we run through um, all of the particulars so that if anybody is interested in coming and paying, we'll give them that. Uh, certainly the first responders and people flooded. Uh, let's just remind people where you are. Uh, where so mm-hmm. where is the theater and how would how would people find you there? So the theater is uh, is on Westheimer, okay. um, right in the Galleria district, in the fifty four twenty Westheimer Road. Okay, um, it's a you can't miss it. It's a um, as I mentioned earlier, it's a brand new eighteen million dollar facility. Um, it's a gorgeous contemporary uh, architecture. This huge window to lobby that faces Westheimer. Um, but we're right here, and um, okay. as we mentioned earlier, Harvey for Harvey is our uh, arts access and fundraising initiative that we're yes. that we're doing. Um, you participate that in that just by buying a ticket. We're donating donating 20% of the proceeds to local disaster relief organizations. If you are a first responder or you're home flooded during Harvey, you can come for absolutely free. Okay, you just have to call our box office at 713-526-2721. Um, and if you are a family that was affected by the flood, if you come to one of our two remaining Sunday matinees at 2 p.m., 
uh, we are putting on a free mini arts camp in our lobby uh, for children ages 5 to 11. Um, and uh, any of your older kids and yourselves can enjoy the show uh, in the theater while your younger kids are in the lobby, and that is if you were affected by the flood, all of that is completely free of charge. It's on us. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much, uh, Jake. Uh, that um, This is uh, Jake Speck, who's on the line with us. He is the new executive director uh, and inter- reintroduced to Texas uh, into Houston through Hurricane Harvey. Uh, the production of Harvey is continuing to go. It started, uh, launched in September the 15th. It uh, goes to October the 1st. Uh, thank you so much, Jake. Let me just repeat a couple of things for people who are listening. If you are a first responder, um, you need to go, uh, dial the number or go to the website, 80players.org. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, this is the Good News Program for Ted Co- with Ted Cox, and we will see you next Thursday at 1. Thanks for checking out this podcast of Lone Star Community Radio, Montgomery County's community radio station. If you enjoyed this recording, make sure to check out our past shows online at IRLoneStar.com or their respective video or podcast formats on YouTube, Google Play, or iTunes. If you have any questions regarding the show, either it being about sponsorships or questions for the host, contact the station manager at D-I-C-K at IRLoneStar.com or call the station at 936-647-3776. This show was recorded in downtown Conroe, Texas, at the Lone Star Community Radio Studio. And Lone Star Community Radio reserves all rights to this recording and images.